Welcome to the Financial Planners Southeast Asia Podcast, a show dedicated to driving the positive evolution of financial advice, specifically within Southeast Asia. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Gwen and you're here in XY Advisor Southeast Asia podcast. And today I am with um, one of the best people I know that is from our industry here in the Philippines, a financial advisor from Wealthy Minds. This is Earl Quick. Hi, Earl. Hi, Gwen. Uh, Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me here. (laughs) Yes, thanks. Thanks for being here as well. So um, I really wanted to talk to you about your experience here in the financial uh, financial advice industry in in XY because I know that you started um, I guess two or three years ago, and I know that you've had a lot of success acquiring clients and growing your business. I really wanted to talk to you about that. But first, um, I want to get to, or I want our audience to get to know you a little bit. So um, I'd like to ask, what made you decide to get into the financial advice industry? Okay, so basically my, what got me into the industry was actually purely coincidental. I really had no idea what the financial industry was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So it just so happens that a few years back, like three years ago, I actually just resigned from my job and I was about to start my business. And out of the blue, someone gave me a call and told me that they were hiring. And then I listened to them, uh, gave them a shot. Uh, they told me it was about a financial industry. And for me, considering that I am, I was actually about to start my own business. So. Mm. I just had a thought in mind that why don't I give it a shot? Just listen mm-hmm. to them, listen to the offer, and boom, there was Coco Crunch. <laughs> oh, yeah, there, I was, I was, and then I was, and then I was, I was, I was here. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, I was like um, just amazed with how they mm-hmm. they presented the offer to me. Uh, I didn't apply. I did not present any like applications to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just gave me a call one day and then it was just purely coincidental that I was already out of a job. I just quit mm-hmm. my job, I'm about to start my own business. I haven't initiated the business at all. So when that opportunity was presented to me, then I realized that, yeah, this might be something that might probably be a calling because in a way they actually yeah. called. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, but that's how it all started. All right, so it was, um purely coincidental or should we say serendipitous all right that's actually great because some of um the people i know as well who are in the industry started off like that like um an opportunity presented itself um to join the financial um advice workforce and they um, jumped into the bandwagon. It totally worked for them. We we get to help people while at the same time um, growing our own business as well. So it's like a win-win situation, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I know that you have um, you are under Wealthy Minds and un- under Sir uh, Tony Ruiz, but you do have your own like business. Unit. business unit yes with uh, your own financial advisors as well so uh, i know that your business name is amdg so what does that stand for yeah so uh, i'm glad they actually asked me about it i was about to edit my name <laughs> 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 okay. yeah but uh, since you asked me about it amdg is actually an abbreviation for ad maiora di gloria so it's actually mm. Latin, Latin phrase uh, which actually mm. came from the society of jesus which mm. means for the greater glory of God. We've translated it in mm. English. Mm. So, so uh, it's a little religious in a way. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I have been in the sales industry for a very, very long time. And mm. being part of the, insu- uh, in the insurance industry, the financial mm. industry, is a little bit similar, but it's not the same. Mm. So there is, a, there is a slight difference between how you do things in sales, direct sales, rather than how we do things here in this industry. 
So given this, uh, when I was about to like uh, make my my brand as a business unit, so mm. I was able to decide that why not uh, dedicate whatever it is that we are doing or planning to do, all for the greater glory of God, and mm. anyway, yes. hope for the best, do whatever we can, and try to learn mm. and learn as much as we can, and again, bottom line is to just make sure that whatever we do, whatever we accomplish, even our failures, we all dedicate it to the greater glory of God, so we don't know, something like that. Oh, and definitely you are you are blessed. You are definitely blessed because, um, as I know, you have twenty two advisors under you, right? With yeah, three hundred and fifty plus clients um, in your business. So congratulations! That is a lot of clients and a lot of advisors as well. Now I want to talk about the uh, um, your advisors first because 22 um, advisors is a lot. How do you like manage or help them out with like their goals and their, um, I know here in the Philippines that we do have quota. So how do you assist and manage your financial advisors in order for them to reach their individual goals? Yes, yeah. so basically in managing uh, advisors, uh, what I always uh, put into priority is to always mm. ask them uh, what is it that they need and was it what is it that they actually want want to achieve in life and mm. uh, I try to align it with whatever it is that we can actually offer here in this industry and of course to give them uh, this to set their expectations that this is not an easy industry <laughs> to be honest mm. so I have been in the sales yes. industry for a very very long time and Mm -hmm. uh, this is a totally different industry. So it's not just about selling and selling and selling. It's more of creating that certain brand, personal brand, uh, company brand, whatever brand it is that you're trying to present to your clients or prospects. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a little different. It's a little different. So mm -hmm. just try to set their expectations that if you really work this out, you really want to mm -hmm. uh, succeed, regardless of any industry that you are going to be in, whether it's financial industry, the industry that we're currently mm -hmm. at right now, or it may be a different yeah. industry, whether it, regardless if you're an employee or anything like that, then you really have to have uh, your time, commitment, and your effort in your drive. You just have to make sure that these things are going to be complete and intact whenever you join mm -hmm. my team. So yeah, uh, mm -hmm. this means how I uh, manage them. All right, that's that's really good. That's um, and I that's really good advice as well. And how do you? How did you actually acquire uh, 22 advisors and make sure that they they stay in the industry? Because I know there are a lot of people who come in and then try it out and realize it's not for me. Like me, right? I, I started a, as a financial advisor and realized that I was never really going to be good at sales. But I do like talking to people. And thus, I started... Um, I deviated to financial advice education instead. So how did you acquire those talents and how uh, how have you managed to keep them? Yeah, uh, keeping financial advisors in your roster is uh, indeed very difficult, especially if mm. uh, I'm not really sure with other industries how they do to compensate mm. the advisors. But in my here, my team, you don't really like uh, have an employer employee relationship so the control is somewhat uh limited you, mm. you can't uh, you can't really like control them like as if they were employees that uh <laughs> threaten them threaten them to move <laughs> uh, not to give them any wage but basically mm -hmm. uh this is a production based industry mm -hmm. that we're currently mm -hmm. at here in the philippines here in the company yep. mm -hmm. so it's basically it's all about motivation uh, mm. Just try to keep them motivated. Try to mm. always remind them why they initially even started to join, why they mm. why they even thought of joining. Yeah, there are ups and downs. It's very very normal. It's just that you just keep on trying to go back, communicate with them, and they just try to talk, talk and talk. <laughs> they just mm -hmm. uh, just I think it's just communication. Just to keep the communication line, just like a relationship. 
You just have to yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> As I was going to point that out, that communication, just like any relationship. Now that's good because my next question is um, around that as well. So uh, I mentioned earlier that you have acquired in the almost three years that you've been in this, this industry, 350 clients under your business. So how did you get all those 350 clients? Well, actually, it was a collaborative effort from the team, so mm. it wasn't really just mine. Although mm. I also do personal, like uh, personal selling for, mm. for our products, but uh, like half of it is actually from the team. More than half mm. of it is from the, is from the team, from mm. my financial advisor. So one thing that's actually probably like uh, here in our industry is that you just need to make sure that you have a particular niche that you're, mm. you're actually trying to target so if you're focused mm. on individuals or families then you go do that you master that mm. first and then mm -hmm. once you're comfortable with that niche then try to get out of your comfort zone and try to look for a different mm. niche so mm -hmm. in our case what we did was we diversified our niche some people mm. were good in individual selling some people mm. were family-based sellers and mm. then some were also corporate sellers so instead mm. of like, yeah, instead of uh, selling to individuals, why mm. not get a whole group like a company, mm. something like mm. that? So more, yeah, so a fraction of our client base is actually uh, on their corporate side of the business. Mm. So they're corporate businesses. So mm. in a way, you don't just get one individual in a business. So they get yeah. the entire yeah. company. So that's, mm. that's it's probably one of the reasons why we yeah, why we have a humble amount of clients. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's very interesting. Like, how were you able to? How were you guys able to um, tie up with a corporate or a business? Um, I know because it's that's quite um, interesting because it's not easy to uh, um, acquire that relationship with a, a company, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. Establishing your brand towards these companies is actually, yeah, mm. it's it easy, but mm. I tell you, it's also not impossible. So it's it's also mm. doable, but it's not easy. So you really have to do the legwork. You really have to mm. talk to the right people. And of course, you mm. have to expand your network. So uh, when we are doing prospecting, we always try to uh, like also assess this particular person's influence, uh, the mm. level of influence that he has, the connection that he has, and to also try to check if whether or not he is connected into companies such <laughs> that we are actually targeting. Like mm. if they have their own mm. companies, they know someone who has, a, who has a company. So it's more of a referral system that we're actually doing for companies. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that's what we uh, we actually get, from, uh, get our corporate clients from. And from one corporate client, they refer to a different corporate client. Mm. And, uh, yeah. So we dominate. Ah. That. So it's really important to make sure that you have a, right, a good relationship with them. <laughs> Oh, that's really great. So um, another company that uh, has tied up with you would actually refer you to other companies uh, and to other. Yeah, that's really awesome. So your business just keeps on growing because um, there are new employees that come into that business, right? And they go directly um, under yours or you get like they get insurance from your financial advisor. So that's really interesting uh, because I know that a lot of financial advisors aspire to get corporate tie-ups and it's very hard to nail because there are times that you get a prospect and it doesn't stick. So I'm really glad that you were able to get um, a few and that has helped you grow your clients. So. 350 clients now now that your business is really growing like what are your plans for 2021 like especially now we are in the new normal and we can't go outside only have these like virtual meetings with our clients like what are your plans for your team yeah so actually the plan is just to keep on moving so just to mm. make sure that we are actually continuing uh, our activities like to continue to talk to people, get to know people. Mm. And I always uh, remind my financial advisors that it's not really about closing a sale, but it's more on making sure, I know it sounds cheesy, but <laughs> it's all it's more about uh, helping people uh, realize that mm. the true reason why we're doing what we do, why we're offering insurance products to them, is because 
we want to help protect them for whatever that mm. would happen to them in the future that they might not mm. be able to have total or absolute control of. And these mm. are things that would really like drain your wallet if you mm, are yeah. not prepared. So mm. I always keep on reminding them, you may be talking to like 10, 20 clients and you're not still able to close a deal or anything with them, but that is okay because the fact of the matter is what you're doing is not say, really like making money out of them up front, mm. but to educate them that if this is something that would happen to you in the future, not really like threatening them or anything like that, but to just give them like a reality check that there are really mm. things in life you have no absolute control. Like, mm. uh, just like waking up in the morning. If it's time to wake up, you really have to wake up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, something like something like that. <laughs> like, yeah, so, you can't keep on snoozing the alarm. You can't keep on snoozing the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's so true. Um, and I, I did mention that we are, we are now in the new normal. And I think that poses as one of the, like, it can either uh, make or break a business. And we've seen a lot of um, businesses right now who has caved um, and were not able to keep up with with like the new normal so how are you able to like grow your business and uh despite the you know being unable to um visit or talk to clients face to face do you purely uh, do you you and your advisors purely go on like virtual meetings or do you still go uh, go ahead and meet with your clients face to face yeah, so uh, initially when the pandemic happened like uh, last mm. year, everyone was forced to go digital or else mm, you're not yeah. going to really like, uh, earn anything. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so um, it was like a, a private thing for them to really like realize that you really have to maximize whatever is there in front of you. Whatever resources that are made available, make sure that you will be able to use it. Whatever resources mm. that you think that you might need in the future that you still don't have, then go ahead and get it, <laughs> like a stable yeah. internet connection <laughs> for starters. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, basically, the, uh, I'm just glad here for 2021. Uh, the year is very, very promising. Um, mm. Like um, a cure for the uh, for the COVID uh, problem mm. is, is mm. already like spreading out. Vaccines yeah, the vaccine. Are, yes, yes. Yeah, mm. Vaccines are arriving. So it's mm. very promising, although there is no certainty still. That's why we're yes. here in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, there are no certainties, but uh, mm. it's promising and it gives us hope that uh, I have to admit, not all my advisors are able to adapt 100% to the virtual mm. thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially for those advisors that are a little bit aged. <laughs> mm. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit aged. So they're not really like affordable talking to uh, a monitor or mm. doing this, this mm -hmm. sort of thing. So they, they are afraid of technology. So there are mm. some advice that are like that. But mm. uh, just to give them hope, uh, right now, borders are slowly opening. So it gives us hope that they can redo what they were doing previously to do one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one, uh, meetings or meetups with their clients. So yeah, there, there is hope. There is hope. So my plans, just keep doing something. Make sure that you always have activities. Ah, oh, that's really good. That's really good. Just keep doing something. So I know that a lot of people have been, um, especially last year, that they've been paralyzed because they're not really sure what to do in order to um, continue earning, right? So that is actually one of the best advice. Just keep doing something. And um, anyway, something would come up, right? If some, if one thing does not work, then try another one. I think that's really good. Now, um, you mentioned that some of your financial advisors are struggling, and those are usually the ones that um, are afraid of technology. So, like, how are they now? Like, are they trying to get back with talking to their clients face to face um, since the borders are slowly opening or like um, are they trying to keep up with technology? Yeah, well the good thing with them is they are actually trying to adapt, trying to learn the technology mm. that they currently have, mm. like this uh, meeting 
virtual mm -hmm. meetings, uh, doing virtual meetings. And right now, since malls are opening, coffee shops are mm -hmm. opening, I'm mm -hmm. also trying to encourage them that if you are comfortable meeting up with your clients face to face, then you can actually mm -hmm. do so. But just be prevented and try to make mm -hmm. sure that you are still cautious because mm -hmm. uh, the virus is still there. So the threat is yes, still there. Yes. Mm, yes, yes, that's good. I'm glad that uh, things are working out again um, for us. And I agree, this year is very promising. There's the vaccine and our borders are slowly opening up. Um, I do see that there's a lot of people in coffee shops again. So coffee shops are now very noisy again. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but yeah, I hope that people get to um, be in a place where everything is good again, because I know that people are still struggling, but I actually, I feel that some, uh, there's good, uh, there's something good about um, what has happened right now, because, uh, because of what happened people are have are now introduced to virtual meetings which actually saves us or saves financial advisors right because you can exactly. just be in the comfort of your own home for those who are tech savvy enough um, you can talk to your clients you don't have to um, get stuck in traffic and then try your best to be on time um, in the coffee shop to meet with your client or maybe it's your client who gets stuck in traffic and you just keep on waiting for them um, in the coffee shop so like do you prefer online meetings to um, in-person meetings or you still really like appreciate online meeting uh, or meeting face people face to face, yeah. yeah so uh, basically, in uh, in terms of preference, uh, I I'm actually enjoying the virtual meetings right now. Mm. So for me, it's uh, to be honest, it's more cost effective because mm. first, if you don't, you don't really need to spend on gas. You don't really need to mm. spend on fare. You don't even mm. need to buy a cup of coffee for your cup for your client. <laughs> you talk to them. And, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's it's more cost effective, but mm -hmm. in terms of the effectivity in uh, closing the deal with your clients, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'd say it's uh, 50 50. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are clients that are more comfortable, they're really able to talk to you uh, mm -hmm. face to face, they're able to like hold the proposal that you're actually making mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so they still, uh, just like in selling books, there are still people who are in these soft bags, paper bags. There is mm. people who would love to have the feeling of touching the paper. Mm. Yes, <laughs> because yes. Because we have that sense of like uh, unity or like, uh, I don't know how they call it. I know, I understand, I understand. I love physical books too. <laughs> <laughs> the feeling of holding a book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, I agree, I agree. I think nothing beats the... Um, the, the human touch um, yeah. and yes yes I agree with that but 50 50 that's interesting that's interesting mm -hmm. I wonder if um, how other financial advisors are doing with that as well but that's good that you brought that up now uh, you mentioned that you uh, this year is going to be um, interesting for you what are your uh, plans for um, 2021 specifically like do you have any targets um, any goals you want to um, smash this year yeah, so basically uh, my biggest target for this year for 2021 is to actually like uh, double or triple the current mm. manpower that I have so mm. if I have 10 to advice right now I am hoping to end up with at least 60 60 oh, wow. at the end mm. of this year uh, mm -hmm. It's not gonna be easy because a lot of people are still in the in this like uh, mentality that mm -hmm. if you get to work for something, you need to definitely mm -hmm. have a fifteen and thirty at pay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so so it's going. It's not gonna be easy, but I I see a lot of uh, uh, talents out there that mm -hmm. are actually doing business. And the fact of the matter is, uh, people who are business minded are actually the ones that are going to flourish in this type of industry. In in in, in my personal standpoint, because they realize that there are things that uh, you need to invest with 
And it's mm-hmm. not just about money. You mm-hmm. need to invest your time. You need to invest your effort. And sometimes the return of investment is going to take a little bit, uh, a little bit um, more than the usual. Just unlike mm-hmm. with impo- a typical employment, wherein mm-hmm. you, re- regardless if you're still a rookie, if you're still new, then you really get to expect something in return out of your effort each mm-hmm. and every single month, each and every payday. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, it's promising, and that's the goal to expand uh, AMDG and to mm-hmm. yeah. Hopefully, also double or triple the number of people that we've actually helped. So, yes. yeah, it's really part of the mission. Uh, yeah, so good luck. I, I wish you the best in that. I know you can hit that 22 by the end of this year, 60. So, that's, 60. that's I will get you back on that. At, at the end of the year, maybe we can have another podcast and see. Please forgive me um, if I only get 59. <laughs> 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 That's cool. And I'm going to ask you how you were able to hit your target for this year. But before we end this podcast, um, I just have um, one more question for you. Um, and that is, like, if you had the chance to change anything when you were starting out um, as a, a financial advisor, would there be anything that you'd like to change or w- are there any advice that you thought that you would have um, listened to sooner? Yeah, probably uh, the biggest advice that I could actually uh, give to our audience right now is to, mm. if you're still starting out, don't mm. go for the money right away. Because mm. honestly speaking, uh, I know that nobody wants to do a financial advice job if there weren't no money involved. So mm. that, would, that would be weird. <laughs> But uh, my advice would be, don't go for the money right ahead. Because Mm -hmm. believe it or not, money is just an output of what you're going to actually Mm offer towards your clients. The sincerity Mm -hmm. has to be there. And you have to learn what you're you're actually presenting. Not just the the things that your clients would want to hear, but also Mm -hmm. the things that your clients are actually afraid to hear. So Mm -hmm. uh, always be transparent to your clients. And whatever it is you're actually offering to them, may it be mm. life insurance, may it be health insurance, uh, non-life or general insurance. So be mm. transparent to them, be honest with them. It is what it is. So mm, yes, give them, show them everything, and uh, just hope that they are going to accept your offer. So that's it. Mm. And then just keep on doing. Uh, a rejection for with one client doesn't necessarily mean that it's a total rejection for all clients. So. <laughs> So there is always going to be someone out there that is going to get an insurance policy from you. Yes, the ones who are ready. Ah, that's good. That's good. Thank you so much, Earl. And thank you for giving me uh, a bit of your time answering my questions. I know I (laughs) ask you a lot of questions and I hope that you do get your, do you do hit your target? So I will be talking to you soon this year (laughs) and see your progress. (laughs) (laughs) 60 or 59. That's good enough. So, (laughs) all right. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you so much, John, for having me here. Bye, guys.